guys welcome back to my channel so for today's video it's another life through my eyes this is going to be episode three and we're going to talk about bullying today but before i do i just wanted to say if you're new to my channel and you don't know what the life through my eyes series is about it is about experiences and things that i've gone through in my life that i want to share with you like i want to share my experiences and i also want to give you guys some tips or advice of how to handle situations like that um, i know not everyone's gone or has gone through the things that i have but these are things that i want to share with you guys to help other people because when i started my youtube channel one of the first things i wanted to do was just get my voice out there and speak about the things that i had knowledge on because I've gone through a lot of stuff in my life and I want to help other people as they go through the things that I'm going have gone through or still go through. Um, so that's what this series is about and as you can tell by the title and like I just said, we're going to talk about bullying. So let's jump into that because it is going to be very long winded. So guys, I know that I've mentioned it a couple times but I never went into like many details about my experience with bullying. Um, I was bullied from about the 5th grade to the 8th grade, um, so 4 full years of school, um, and it was brutal, it was downright relentless. These kids, um, the ones that I've grown up with, they were just brutal, is what it comes down to, they were brutal. Um, they used to pick on me for the cars that my parents drove, where we lived, the clothes I was wearing, the fact that I didn't have like the new expensive I, what was it, the I shuffle, the shuffle, whatever, whatever the first like I Apple product was, I think it was the shuffle. Um, I didn't have that. Um, when talking about Christmas, I didn't get all these extravagant things. I didn't go on these like extravagant and expensive vacations. Um, like they used to pick on me for everything. And some of the things like more like in depth things that they would pick on me about is I used to miss a lot of times, a little, t a lot of time in school. Um, a little partial part was because I was being picked on. Another part was because my mom just didn't care and I could stay home and the last part is I wanted to try to spend time with my mom and that time to be the time that I could. So I missed a lot of time and I mean I missed a lot of time. And I remember that there was a rumor that I had gotten kicked out of school, um, that I was diseased and contagious, um, there was one that I was dying, like I mean literally the worst. And this is stuff that was like brought to my attention and people were asking me and when I told them it was a lie, you're lying, you're lying, I mean it was brutal. Um, and they would just pick on me about anything. Literally, if they could pick on me, they would. And when that didn't, like, suffice, and they couldn't keep up their coolness or their appearance of being popular, it turned into throwing pens and pencils at me. Um, I had gum in my, put in my hair. I had lollipops thrown at me. Um, I had one kid rip my book bag off my back. Like, I mean, it was brutal um and it finally got to the point where i was threatened my seventh grade year um a kid that i had grown up with my whole entire life threatened to kill me um and though i wasn't the only person he threatened to kill it scared the living bejesus out of me because one i would known this kid my whole life he knew where my bedroom was he knew all this stuff like literally knew my my pretty much my routine routine everything and the fact that he had access to guns and they weren't like locked kind of freaked me out a little bit not gonna lie um to the point that like on halloween i didn't want to go trick-or-treating that year because it was literally right before halloween um didn't know what he was going as didn't know what he was going to look like didn't want to run into him i mean i really didn't want to go and i just remember being like so scared and feeling so alone because like everyone just seemed like they were against me and feeling so empty because one I didn't have fr like I didn't have many friends and the ones I did like they never stood up to the bullies for me they were just kind of those bystanders that watched and just feeling so empty and alone is just not a good feeling to have just let me throw that out there but I just remember the things and how I felt and the fact that teachers and the principal and my guidance counselor at my school did nothing about it 
hurt even more because I have these kids picking on me and then I have these teachers and stuff not doing anything. I mean, it got to the point that one teacher even told me I was lying because the people that I was, in her eyes, accusing um, and slandering, not really telling the truth about, were kids that she liked. They were her, like, favorite students and she could not believe that these guys were picking on me. And then on top of it, she made these, like, backhanded comments to me about how, like, how would I know if they're picking on me if I'm never in school? and just like these sly remarks um and like the guidance counselor was like well you know maybe this boy's picking on you because he likes you sorry if that's how he shows people he likes them i don't want him to like me he can he can stop now and find a new interest because i'm not all about this um and like the principal's not doing anything when i got threatened i don't think the school would have done anything about it if i didn't go to the cops and the cops forced their hand and they got him pulled from school and I went to court for protection and the, the uh, court sent him to another school. He wasn't allowed to come back to our school until, you know, until we were such and such age and it was only if I knew he was coming back and I was okay with it and all this stuff and there were so many like little pieces to it like if his friends did something to me or if, um, if they said anything to me like he could get not only could they get in trouble, but he still could get in trouble if, like, they retaliated against me. Um, and it was, it was bad. Um, and the school, even then, once they had all the paperwork it, all in a line about that, about what was, like, this is okay, this is bad, if this happens, we need to know. Even with that and knowing that they had to report everything, they never did. I remember at the end of my eighth grade year, because I got threatened in seventh grade year, at the end of eighth grade year, they did a another follow-up with me just to see how the next year went and I told him I said it went just as bad as last year except I didn't get threatened this time I was picked on I was bullied I was singled out I was all that stuff and they asked me about it and they asked me if I told the school they investigated with the school and the school had no documentation of it it was like it never happened um and it was it was terrible I mean it was it was terrible <laughs> feeling so alone and empty and just like an outcast like something was wrong with me that these kids couldn't like me um and i decided between my eighth grade and my ninth grade year that i wasn't going to take it anymore i was done completely done um i was going to stand up for myself and defend myself whatever way and means that i had to whether that meant using my voice or if they started to fight with me fighting back I was going to defend myself and not let anybody scare me, make me feel unwanted, timid or anything. I was going to go out there and I was going to go swinging if I had to. Um, and I was just ready. And I remember going into school and my counselor, the first week of school, checking in with me, wanted to make sure I was okay. And I told her, I said, look, I said, you're not going to protect me. I'm going to protect myself. She asked me what I meant and I told her, I said, whatever it takes. I'm going to protect myself. I'm done being inferior to these people that think they're above me because they just feel that way. It's it's done. I'm done. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to be the person I want to be. And I remember her just telling me, you know, don't do anything stupid because you can get in trouble. Just like they got in trouble for bullying me, for for picking on me, for making me feel the way I felt. Yeah, okay, we'll see how that goes, but okay. So, after that, even if they were saying stuff about me, never crossed my mind, never dented my ego. I just went about my day and just moved on with my life. And that year, I missed one day of school. One day of school, and only because I had gotten really sick the day before in school and wasn't allowed to return back for... 24 hours like I wasn't allowed like I left school at like 3 or no I left school at like 1 I couldn't come back until 1 the next day which they wouldn't let me come back anyway because I was after the day so I couldn't go back until the following day so I missed one day of school and that was upsetting I cried not gonna lie so my piece of advice to anybody that's going through being bullied or has been bullied or just even parents my tips for parents is talk to your kids, 
ask them what's going on. Um, if they seem a little off, try to find what's going on because I know for a while there I hid a lot of it from my mom. Um, just because one, I didn't want my mom to know I was being picked on and two, when adults don't seem to care, it just kind of hinders you from talking about it. And if they do tell you stuff that's going on, don't make your first reaction to call the other kids' parents or to run to the school. Talk to them about being the bigger person and teach them ways to stand up for themselves is definitely a big thing. I know it's hard for somebody in that situation to stand up for themselves or feel that they're strong enough to stand up by themselves, but you are strong enough to stand up by yourself. Um, so listen to them, talk to them, you know, encourage them to stand up for themselves, encourage them to speak out to other people about this. Um, that's my first tip. My second tip to parents is if you see it happen, document it. Document it with anything you can. Ch my child came home on April 1st um, complaining, uh, you know, talking about how so-and-so said this and did this and she came home with gum in her hair. All of it. Document it because the best thing you can do is if you can put a date to it, if you can put a date to something, it helps you in the long run because then you have a timeline. Okay, April this happened, May this happened, June this happened, you know, you have a timeline and that shows consistency. Um, and you, you want that, especially if it ever gets to the point where you need to go to court, you want to have that backup of a timeline. Um, and my third piece of advice is if you go to the school and the school doesn't give you the answers you're looking for, go above them. Go to the school board, go to the cops if you need to, go wherever you need to go to get your child protected and to be safe the way you feel that they should be safe. I, if my if Joey was getting bullied or threatened or anything, I'm not going to stop until this until the school does what they're supposed to or I'm to the point where I can go no farther. If I there's nothing else I can do and they're still not protecting him, I will yank him out of school before I let him go through the stuff that I had gone through. For people going through this, and I mean bullying happens in workplaces, it happens in school, it happens in after school, it happens in adulthood, not in work, on Facebook. I mean this happens everywhere. It happens even on YouTube. Like these people that leave nasty comments to you and they say nasty things to you, they're cyber bullying you. So for somebody going through that, first of all, know that you are better than that person that is attacking you. There's no reason to attack them. Like if they're calling you fat and ugly, don't say, well, you must be too. Like there's no reason to attack them. They're looking for a reaction out of you, whether it be you cry, you respond nastily back to them, you delete their comments, any of that. I mean, you can delete the comments. I mean, they're going to keep doing it, but you don't need to say anything back to them. Just delete the comment and let that be that, okay? If you are a child going through this, take it to talk to a parent, talk to a teacher, somebody you feel confident and safe talking to because you should not feel alone during this time. You should have somebody you can go to. Just like your parents, take it as far as you need to until somebody listens to you because you, again, shouldn't feel alone during this time. And my last bit of advice to somebody going through this is, I know it's hard, I know it's scary, but you need to stand up for yourself. Just stand up and just look at yourself and just tell yourself, I'm not taking this anymore. I'm not letting them do this to me anymore and stand up for yourself because the second you start standing up for yourself, is the less likely that they're going to keep coming after you because at that time you're not showing them the reaction they want they're not getting you to be wrought up they're not getting you to show anything and it's going to drive them insane and they're just going to stop and if that doesn't work you can always come talk to me i am more than willing to listen i'll give you any piece of advice that i can and at the end of the day you'll at least know you have one person in your corner cheering you on so I hope this helped you guys. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. And I'll see you again for another episode of Life Through My Eyes real soon. Bye, guys.